Welcome to Smart Timber Graphics. My name is George. And in this video, we'll create a banner for your YouTube channel in After Effects. And you might ask why in After Effects and not Photoshop? I'll answer you that if you search for how to create a banner for YouTube channel, all you'll find is a bunch of tutorials using Photoshop and some other software. And there are people who are not completely comfortable with you using photoshop and prefer to use something like after effects and i'm one of those people myself so that's why i decided to, to record a tutorial using after effects only so enough talking for now let's jump to the tutorial and one thing before we start is that you'll need this template i'll leave a link in the description so you can download it's completely free and uh, you will need this template in order to make our work a lot a lot easier and precise so make sure you import this template in your project once you do drag it drag the png to the new composition icon this will create a new composition based on the di dimensions of this template and now we need to bring our rulers so set the rulers and you could zoom in nicely on these lines here and add uh, rulers like so you don't have to do this but honestly this will make it so much easier and also uh, by doing this we can hide our template because well technically we will no longer need it and let's place all the rulers and then i will explain you what's happening and why we're placing rulers like this so well right this looks good so this template is designed for YouTube banners specifically and as you can see the, there are different areas here and this one the main gray area in the middle is the one that will be shown on mobile device it even says that and this area up to here will be shown on tablets and this area all the way up to here will be shown on desktop and an entire template uh, will be shown on tvs so you might have guessed it right we'll be focusing on this middle area here because it's the most important and why because that's what will be shown to mobile users and the majority of traffic actually comes from mobile users so we need to optimize our banner in the best way possible to suit this middle area so once you've created these rulers you can go ahead and hide the the template because we don't really need that we know our working area is inside here and of course when creating a banner for your youtube channel you have to understand that every channel's content is different so a banner from one channel might not really apply to the other so don't really go and copy what i'm doing here try to get the overall idea and experiment with it as much as you like of course until you find the something that suits your needs best and suits your type of content and theme of your channel best so all right enough talking now i'm going to continue so of course as i said every banner, banner will be different uh, but typically it goes something like uh, let's select the type tool here and create some text let's make it white so we can see it so your channel's name will be in the middle so let's type smithtimba graphics so that's my channel yes so we can maybe we can make it like this be better in my opinion and place it in the middle like that yeah, and you could also have a smaller text so let's decrease this something like that and write something like after or actually no motion graphics tutorials and place this in the middle in a below so yeah this is like the, the typical way i'd say and you can change the font of this to like a different one but i mean it looks good to me to be honest and then you could go ahead and add your social links so i've got mine here and i've literally created them before this tutorial they're pretty simple but for this tutorial they will do the job so let's set the scale to something like 40 something that fits you best and place them somewhere around here so usually they go to the right side or at least that's how I've seen them. Let's decrease uh, the scale more to like 30. It would be better. And place them somewhere around like here. So yeah, that, that's all right. And also you can add some more elements and more text using you know, hashtags. Uh, but you do not want to overload your uh, composition. So what I like to do 
Next, uh, let's create a new solid. So right click, new uh, solid. And let's name this BG for background. Bring this down all the way. And let's add, uh, go to effects and presets, search for gradient ramp. So uh, gradient ramp. And add this to the solid. And uh, for the colors, of course, choose any color that you like. I generally like the purple uh, purplish color, so I'm going to choose purple for stock color. For the end color, I'll go for some like more pink. And place the colors like this. Okay. Just like that. And even though we are focusing on the middle point, we do not want to uh, completely leave out uh, the other parts because, well, some people still might see that on the TV, on the desktop. Okay. So that's a nice thing to do. So the next step would be to, you see this area right here is pretty empty. So in my case, uh, as I'm mainly doing tutorials in uh, After Effects, so you could add a logo or of the, what type of or like software you're using, what type of work you do, add a logo in the, don't have to be here, it could be here or anywhere that you like. So let me go ahead and bring the logo in. So I've got here After Effects logo, let's bring it to the timeline. Press S for scale, set the scale to something like 40 and bring this to this corner. And also for the sake of the tutorial, let's bring in the Premiere Pro logo as well. I know I'm not, I haven't done a single tutorial on Premiere Pro yet, but I will for sure in the future. So let's place them like this. When people look at my banner, they'll see After Effects and Premiere Pro, so they'll understand straight away that I'm using these two to create tutorials and whatnot. The next step, what I like to do is uh, to go ahead and double click this shape tool or rectangle tool. It's quite a huge rectangle, so move it here. I press W and rotate this shape. Make sure you hold uh, shift so it snaps to this uh, 45 degree curve and then press selection tool and place it to somewhere around here. Once you do that, go to effects and presets or search for turbulent displace and add it to the shape layer. Let's actually rename this shape to um, left. Okay. And for the amount, go to something like 120. And for the size, increase it until you see it fit. So 208 looks good. If we Move it to the right slightly. This looks uh, all right. And next step, go to effects and presets and search for drop shadow. So add drop shadow to the left shape. Uh, for the distance, increase it to something like 120. And uh, you could increase the softness by just by a touch, so 30. And leave it like that, that should be fine. And let's bring this layer all the way down above our background, like this. Uh, next step would be to select our left layer, duplicate it, and let's rename it to right. And select it, drag it to the right, and then place it somewhere around here. And for the drop shadow of our right shape, change its direction to so, so it faces this way not the other one all right so at this point this looks all right and you can of course go ahead and experiment with it further until you see fit since my channel is about motion graphics and tutorials i can go ahead and add some random elements and lines and it will make sense but depending on your type of content that might not really fit into your banner so what I like to do, and I've literally done this for my own banner, you can go ahead and check it out right now. Uh, I go to the pen tool, make sure your fill is set to none, and your stroke is set to whatever amount of pixels, so 10 pixels for me, and create a line like this. If you hold control, it'll create a straight line. And the quick way to duplicate this would be to go ahead and expand the properties of it, go to add and add a repeater, and it'll add a couple copies. We'll go to properties of repeater one. You can, you know, add copies, but three copies is fine for me. Now let's select the selection tool and drag the shape to wherever we want it, pretty much. 
And what I like to do, let's hit W here. Let's rotate the shape like this. All right. And on the timeline here, let's actually place it below our layers like this. And move it out like this. So it sort of looks like the lines are coming from uh, from below of the shape. So that looks cool in my opinion. You can go ahead and add more lines. So as you guys can see, I've added some more elements, a line here, and a couple burst animations here. So I really love these burst animations. They look so cool. And I've recorded a tutorial on how to create a burst animation. If you're interested in that, go ahead and check it out. At the point when you're happy and satisfied with what you've created and you want to export this, uh, go ahead and select any point on your timeline, press B, then press N to lock that one single frame, then go to File, Export, and you can either choose MIDI Encoder or a normal render queue. I normally use Adobe MIDI Encoder because that's what it's made for. So choose that option, give it some time to load, and then right here, make sure you click on this blue that says, well, it might say something different for you. And once this window pops up, make sure for format, you select PNG and choose, well, either one of presets. I usually choose this one with alpha. Alpha pretty much means transparent. So, uh, well, just choose that alpha. And for the settings, you can leave it the same. Then, of course, here, the output name, give it the name and the destination folder. Then click OK. And once you click this start button, it'll quickly export your file to the destination that you've specified. And here you have yourself your own banner that is ready to be uploaded to YouTube. At this point, I think our tutorial is done. I, I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions or suggestions, as always, feel free to drop them down in the comment section. And uh, thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.